What's up, everybody? Yes, I am ripping off Brad Jones. Um, I didn't feel like uh, shooting this when I got home or recording it, so I just decided to do it really quick. I just got out of seeing Spider-Man Homecoming. Um, and I'm going to go into spoilers here, okay? This is your spoiler warning. I'll say it's good. It's really good. Maybe the best Spider-Man movie. Maybe my favorite Spider-Man movie. But awesome. Now, I'm going to go into spoilers, okay? Spoilers. Spoilers. Have we turned it off yet? Spoilers, spoilers. 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 Okay, here we go. Okay, so this was awesome. This was um, this was amazing. Uh, no pun intended. It was spectacular, even. Um, yeah, Tom Holland is fantastic. Um, the whole cast is really good. Man, Michael Keaton is amazing as the Vulture, and has a, is a really good villain too. He's he's kind of a, he's not just a one dimensional villain. He's got some uh, different layers to him that really was a lot of fun to see play out throughout the movie and you kind of understand him sort of kind of so those are kind of the best villains and he was man he was great um you saw a little uh there's a couple in intimidating moments where you saw a little batman come out i think a couple beetle juice moments too which is, was just great to see uh, just anytime he acts like that it's great but i really liked it man i <laughs> really 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 enjoyed it um this is definitely, the, for me, okay, so everybody loves Spider-Man 2, right? That's like one of the best superhero movies ever. I'm not a big Spider-Man 2 fan. I really don't like it all that much. Um, and there are reasons, maybe I'll explain in a later video, but it's not the place to do that right now. Um, I love the first Tobey Maguire Spider-Man, though. That's my favorite Spider-Man movie. And this is pretty close to that. It's at least the best since that. So it's the best Spider-Man movie to me in 15 years. <laughs> um, it's fantastic, man. Uh, there's, uh, it's not, I wouldn't say it's like, perfect i think that i mean andrew garfield I, I was still a big fan of and i like the older spider-man personally even when i was little i i, I mean i liked spider-man in uh, high school and everything i like those stories but i always connected most with spider-man for whatever reason when he was a little bit older like in his mid-20s or something like that and i think that ha has a lot to do with that he was uh he was portrayed like that age in the comics at that point when i was starting to read spider-man um so i like him and the problems that he, he has to overcome and stuff when he's a little bit older but i still like the uh the high school portrayal and everything like that so this was done amazingly but the high school stuff was handled so well uh, it's a very believable uh, relationships and believable story for a high school student and everything and it was great man um him and his friend were fantastic together uh really good chemistry even uh flash thompson was not like the prototypical flash thompson jock but he's still a bully he's still flash he's got that kind of character about him um mj was in it i guess at the end <laughs> um so she was michelle you know zendaya everyone said that that was going to be mj anyway so we kind of already knew that going in but um this is a completely different character completely different and there's some clever twists in there with liz allen who's not really liz allen um and everything like that so that you know those twists and everything on the lore was fun to see play out they didn't have a spider sense in this one for some reason i don't know if they just cut that all together or what? But uh, that's a little weird. Um, I think Spider-Man should always have a spider sense. That's one of his main powers. Um, so that was kind of weird that it wasn't in there. But, you know, I'll take it for how good of a movie it was. Um, another thing that bothered me is this is a very nit nitpicky thing. But um, they he just calls, and he did this in Civil War too, I think. But he just calls Aunt May May. That's your aunt. What's wrong with you, man? Why are you calling your aunt just May? I don't go around calling my Uncle Johnny Johnny. I get slapped in the face. Come on, man. <laughs> no, the, you gotta... It's Aunt May. I mean, I know it's Marissa Tomei, and they keep making all the jokes about how she's a hot Italian woman and stuff. And yes, she's still very, very attractive. But, I mean, it, it's Aunt May. Just, come on. Small thing, little thing. Um, but, yeah, I mean, Tom Holland is amazing as this Spider-Man. He's so relatable and, and just a really honest portrayal of a kid... His age, I think he's 19 or 20 right now. He's playing like 15 or 16 year old in this. But man, so good in um, just the earnest portrayal of stuff. And you see, there's a moment when he's being crushed by the uh, the building. If you see the movie, you know what I'm talking about. And that was an emotional high point of the movie where he's like, he's almost on the verge of tears. And you can see at this mo at this point, he's just a kid. He's just just a kid. He's a teenager. Um, and he has to pull himself together, and that was the essence of Spider-Man. That's one of the reasons I like Spider-Man so much, is that he pulls himself out of those situations through his self-determination and everything, and that was just a really great moment for him. And uh, that tied the movie... That that brought that scene brought that movie up, or this movie up to a whole other level for me, where I was like, now... I mean, I was on board before, of course, but that was the moment where I was like, this is Spider-Man, absolutely. Totally on board, fantastic. 
Um, it was really funny. I mean, a Spider-Man movie should be funny um, in an endearing way, and this was. Um, so, I, and you see the little seeds of his smart assness that will come out later, I think. Um, because it was in this movie, but like I said, it, he's a very earnest, honest kid. And as Spider-Man, he's just trying to get through the day and sort of making jokes here or there. But the, the humor in that Spider-Man character is more from his inexperience than him just being a smartass like, uh, you know, we're used to seeing or like Andrew Garfield was in those other movies. But, um, but yeah, I think, um, in terms of emotion, I, I still really like the, the first Amazing Spider-Man movie, the stuff with Uncle Ben, I really, really liked. And that was kind of the emotional high point for like all the Spider-Man movies for me. The ending when he's listening, when Andrew Garfield is listening to the voicemail of, of Uncle Ben, um, almost had me on the verge of tears when I first saw that. So that was um, a really good um, a, a sort of encompassing moment of Peter's, you know, motivation for everything. And um, I still really like the first Amazing Spider-Man movie, mostly because I really like Andrew Garfield. I just really, really like him as Spider-Man and as Peter Parker. I don't care what anybody says out there. I like him as both of those, um, same character, but both of those uh, personalities, uh, personas. So, um, this was, you know, still had that emotional high point. There's no mention at all of Uncle Ben. They have like a throwaway line about his, you know, being bit by the spider, which we didn't need to see again. So happy that we didn't get that. Uh, Tony Stark and, and uh, Happy Hogan are not in the movie quite as much as I think the advertisements are showing. I mean, like, he's Tony Stark is bigger than Spider-Man is on the poster. I mean, they're definitely in it. They're big supporting characters, but they're not in it as much as the advertisements have portrayed them as, or as much as I at least thought that they were going to be. Um, so it was, uh, it was a good balance there. It was mostly about Spider-Man and, you know, sort of him looking up to these heroes and everything like that. So it was really cool to see him as a young kid look up to Captain America has a couple of funny cameos in it and everything and just um, it was a really solid story it was a really solid uh, character portrayal of Spider-Man I think that Michael Keaton sort of stole every scene he was in there's a great moment in the car when uh, the homecoming thing that twist the whole twist with him answering the door masterful masterfully done fantastic and then when they're driving he figure out that he's Spider-Man um, through Liz kind of letting some details slip about uh, coincidences where Spider-Man is and Peter isn't. Uh, yeah, that whole moment where he, he lets Liz go in and then he has uh, a talk with Peter in the car when he's in the back and just, whew, that is a, that was a little, those shades of Batman right there and further because he's a villain. So, man, but he's a blue collar villain. You relate to him. Um, you get that. Uh, all you know, all this stuff has been destroyed around him, and he's trying to pick up the pieces like everybody else. And he kind of represents the working man, um, but has gone about it in a completely different way. But he also has a respect for Spider-Man, as we see at the end, because Spider-Man saves him at the end, with, you know, at Coney Island or wherever that was. Um, he saves Adrian Toomes. Uh, they never call him Adrian; they just call him Toomes. <laughs> but um, they save him, or he saves him. And then when he's in jail later, he knows who Peter is at this point, but he won't let the Scorpion, which Matt Gargan is in this movie know who he is um and also shockers in this movie kind of sort of so uh we'll see what they do with the other characters the other villains i'm looking forward to see what they do with that and i'm um, you know with i heard that they're gonna actually cross over tom hardy's venom movie with spider-man at some point i don't know how they're gonna do that or um you know because there's a big age difference obviously between tom holland and uh tom hardy the toms there so I'm not sure how they're going to cross over with that, um, but they did announce it, so we'll see if they keep their word on that. I think everyone's really wanting to wash the tastes out of their mouth of Spider-Man 3 and, and Topher freaking Grace as Eddie Brock, which is one of the worst casting decisions I've ever freaking seen. And I like Topher Grace. It's not that he's a bad actor, just completely wrong for that part. Um, so we want the real Venom. I think uh, Tom Hardy is a good choice for Venom for Eddie Brock, so... Um, hopefully we'll see Tom Holland and Tom Hardy together in the same movie soon. But, um, yeah, I mean, we saw, like, the Iron Spider suit kind of at the end, so, um, I'm assuming he'll put that on for the Infinity War fight when that finally happens in a couple movies. Um, so it, it tied into the universe really well. Um, I almost, I mean, it, it was great that we got to see him interact with Tony Stark and everything, but I'm, I almost think it would have been stronger just him kind of figuring stuff out sometimes. Um, I think the core thing, like I said, is him looking up to those heroes and trying to be like them and, and, and all that stuff. And obviously Peter doesn't have a father figure, so he sort of has Tony take that role 
Um, and there's a nice scene where he's saying, I was just trying to be like you um, when he takes the original spider suit back. Um, so, yeah, it was um, <clears throat> it was really good. I'm going to just say that overall I really enjoyed it. I'm a huge Spider-Man fan, and this left me very satisfied. I really, really like it. Pretty much love it. Might be the best Spider-Man movie ever. Like I said, I'm not a big Spider-Man 2 fan. I think it was better than that, my opinion only. Um, but the first Spider-Man movie the, from 2002, I still hold in my heart as something special. So this is like, this battles for that. I might have to, you know, see this a few more times before I make a call on that. But really liked it. What did you think of this Spider-Man movie? Did you guys really dig it? Was it as good as the reviews are saying it is? Did it let you down at any point? I don't think it was perfect, like I said, but it was pretty freaking close to being a, a perfect Spider-Man story. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Um, coming up soon, I am going to be putting up uh, Super Kick Safety, so keep an eye out for that coming in the next couple weeks. And also uh, keep an eye out for the Game of Thrones vlogs with me and Porter, which will be starting a week from Sunday or Monday whenever I have a chance to put that up. Um, and also make sure, if you haven't, check out the top five best Nostalgia Critic episodes. It was trending! It was trending the other day, guys. So exciting. Um, we had a couple articles written about us, um, about Doug's 10-year anniversary, and they mentioned the video in there, the top five video. So it's been cool to get, uh, you know, the the uh, the recognition for that, and everyone's been been telling me that they like the video. So I appreciate that. There's a lot of work because it's basically a mini documentary I put together. So um, I'm a little bit behind on top five because... I had to edit that for all, all week, so I didn't have a chance to watch uh, a lot of stuff, but I'm, I'm getting my feet back under me, and I still will have a, a top five video out on Tuesday for you guys. Um, and it is a Marvel-related video, and then the following week will be the top five best uh, Spider-Man, uh, uh, the animated series episodes from the 90s. I'm really looking forward to that, watching that right now. So, um, yeah, let me know what you guys think of the movie below. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you soon. Spider-Man, he does whatever a spider can. See you later. Whip.